Hello, and welcome to Quick Charge. I'm Mikey G, and it's Thursday, February 22nd. Tesla is working on a software update to slash the sentry mode power usage by about 40%, reducing the vampire drain on parked vehicles. Now, it might sound like a smaller update, but it could be bigger than one might think. Electric vehicles do lose some power when parked, often referred to as battery drain. Sentry mode, which is the ability to have the vehicle record using the external camera, it takes up a fair amount more than typical clocks, battery temperature controls, and things like that. Now, with sentry mode on, some Tesla owners report a vampire drain of 7.2 kilowatt hours in a day. But now, Drew Baglino, Tesla's senior vice president of powertrain and energy engineering, he revealed that Tesla is working on an update that will reduce the power consumption of this mode by as much as 40%. Now, this means that in an average Model 3 or Y, having used sentry mode all day, the owner could save about 4% of the total battery with this update. Now, the update is reportedly planned for the second quarter, which is April through June. Kia is plowing ahead with plans to produce its first three-row electric SUV in the U.S., which is slated to begin this spring. However, it's unclear whether Kia's new U.S.-made EV9 will fully qualify for the federal tax credit, at least at first. Now, Kia's Georgia facility is undergoing preparations to start building the SUV this spring, with the first U.S. made coming out this summer. However, the new requirement limit of 2% of the vehicle's battery plans from China could be an issue. The CEO of Kia Georgia, Stuart Countess, told Automotive News, quote, We're finishing some fine-tuning in the trial phase. And then he added that the facility will undergo a transition phase before it can begin using the locally sourced batteries for the EV9. Now, it's not clear when this change will take place. Now, if Kia took a page from Cadillac, they would hand out purchase incentives to the customers. But so far, it just looks like they're using the leasing loophole that will apply to the popular SUV. Mercedes-Benz is backtracking on their EV plans, as the luxury automaker plans to continue building gas-powered cars well into the 2030s. Now, Mercedes announced plans to go all-electric by the end of the decade in 2021, but in true PR fashion, they did include a caveat saying, quote, where market conditions allow. Not that it really matters. If they wanted to change course, they would have done it anyway. Now, the automaker said that the newly launched vehicle architectures will be electric only from 2025 and onwards, but now they expect electrified vehicles, which includes hybrids, to represent 50% of total sales in the year 2030, which is drastically lower than the 100% commitment that they previously made. Now, Mercedes did see slips in profits in a few regions, including 7.4% dip in the USA. The automaker cited higher inflation, supply chain costs, and expenses for future tech and vehicles for the lower gross profits they also incurred. Now, Mercedes joins American automakers Ford and General Motors, who also recently pushed back their EV initiatives. Electrek Scooter Doll takes a first drive in the Honda Prologue, the General Motors platform compact electric crossover from Honda. Scooter writes in summary, quote, the Prologue is a decent start, but it's also not 100% Honda yet. I'd compare it to a Nissan Aria as a more than adequate EV that could serve as a perfect transition vehicle for drivers graduating from internal combustion to electric. I'd still take the Prologue over the Aria and would 100% take it over the Toyota BZ4X in a heartbeat. The Honda Prologue EV lacks the wow factor, but it's a comfy, dependable ride with plenty of cargo space for its size. Honda fans will love it, as will consumers looking for a semi-affordable EV with plenty of space, just not a third row. Ford has seemingly leaked their NACS or J3400 to CCS adapter. This is the adapter to give EV owners on Ford vehicles access to the Tesla supercharger network. Now, it's been out for about a year or so since Ford became the first major automaker to adopt the Tesla connector. Since then, Tesla has signed deals with virtually all companies selling in North America, and now we're starting to see some adapters pop up because the native-built cars are still a little over a year away. Now, the adapter showed up on Ford Parts website, but it was then discovered and the automaker took it down. Now, unfortunately, we don't have the charge rate listed on the actual model of this item. That's unfortunate because adapters, especially small ones like this, could be a bottleneck in achieving a peak charge rate. Although Ford vehicles really aren't charging at that number anyway, so it's not like it would matter for now. Now, Ford recently said that they would be giving away the adapter to existing owners for free. And that seems to be the case, 
as on the parts site, it had the item listed for a single dollar. Now, that's very likely a placeholder price that would be swapped out with another button that says find a local dealer or something like that. Nikola Corporation has announced that they have delivered the first production hydrogen fuel cell Class 8 truck in North America during the fourth quarter. And the company said it also remains on track to deliver the first reworked battery electric trucks back to customers by the end of the first quarter. Nikola's revenue more than doubled in the fourth quarter, 11.5 million versus 5.5, but it slipped in 2023 to 35.8 million compared to 2022, which is 49.7 million. Net losses were lower in the fourth quarter. However, Nikola's losses widened from 2022 with 966 million in net loss for the calendar year of 2023. Now, gross margins also fell to 597% which is from 173% in 2022. Nikola's stock is down over 70% in the last 12 months and 99% from the all-time high. In today's community comment found on YouTube, Laker6943 says, If you buy an EV, you need to immediately buy an emergency tool to break the window in case of a fire so you don't get incinerated. Well, Laker, that is true. Escaping a dangerous vehicle is very important. They actually make a multi-tool for this purpose. It's a glass breaker combined with a seatbelt cutter and also pepper spray. You can even get it in a teal color if for some reason that matches the interior of your car. I don't know. Things like this can also be found at gas stations or in the automotive section of a major market store. Now, the reason these are so common is that gasoline cars catch on fire a lot. In fact, they're so often that it barely makes the local news, let alone national news. In fact, government data has said that gasoline cars are 100 times more prone to fires over electric cars. Now, if we back up a little bit, in the early days of electric car adoption, each and every fire was on the national news, as if the whole entire United States was burning up. But nobody seemed to be bothered by the exact same batteries that people put in their weed eaters, their drills or the same batteries that they hold up to their face with a phone or a toothbrush. But it's true that electric vehicles do catch fire. I mean, that does happen. But this is one issue that has blown way out of proportion. It's like the idea that humans only use 10% of their brain. I mean, no matter how many times that gets debunked, it always winds up coming back all over again. Anyways, thanks for watching Quick Charge. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have a great seatbelt cutter.